Hello, we're coming live from you from Microsoft Ignite 2018. My name is Morris Daly, and together with, I have my colleague here, Nikolai Anderson. Hi, my name is Nikolai Anderson. I work with TrueSec. I'm a specialist in Config Manager and Intune. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to talk about today? Today we are going to talk about the new announcement coming straight out of Ignite, uh, which is Intune now supports Win32 apps uh, for distributing. So that's something people have been looking for for quite a while. They've had a bit of limitation in regards to deploying apps which are only MSI with a single file. And this gets around that for them. So I think this is a bit of a game changer when it comes to this product. Yeah, so let's uh, dig into a little bit more what this is all about. So this new feature, um, it's for installing uh, MSI files with not just a single file, but multiple files. But it's also for installing exe files. So as Nikolai has already said, the um, new, new Win32 app conversion tool is available for Intune. Um, so it's on their GitHub and what it does is basically package the application into a single file which has a, a, an MD5 hash um, contained within. It's got an um, um, application manifest and it allows you then to import that into Intune and specify both installation and uninstalled strings. The same way as what you would be familiar with if you're using Configuration Manager. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look. Um, I suppose you should also mention that Windows 10 1607 is a requirement later. Um, you can do all of this for if you're doing simply just Azure AD join machines or if you're doing hybrid Azure AD join machines as well. Indeed. Um, so let's take a look at how it works. First of all, we need to have a folder structure like we do here. Um, this is the application tool, the packaging tool that I was talking about previously. So this is an exit file. It's a command line, command based tool. Um, you have the app source folder, which is where you're going to put your installation setup files, like I've just done here. Um, you also need to specify an output folder, um, like this. Um, so So this tool, we need to run it as a command line, has a few parameters that you need to use. So you simply specify dash C for the source folder, dash S for the setup file, which is the main setup file. It could be setup XC or anything like that. Um, the dash O parameter is for where it's going to output the Intune Vim file that is going to create. And this file is going to be encrypted, and it's the file that we're going to use to upload into Intune. So uh, and for those who aren't really comfortable using parameters all the time, it's also mentioned, worth mentioning that they can run the exe and it will prompt for the three specified requirements. Oh yes. So let's run this. It's pretty quick. It's a small application. We're testing with 7-zip here. We go back into the output folder. You can now see that we have this new 7-zip.intune.wim folder. The next step from here would be to go into Intune to the client app section, add a new app, select Windows app Win32, and as it says here, it's currently in preview, but it's going to be generally available pretty soon. First step we need to do is to simply just specify that generated into a WIM file, like this, upload it. and it will automatically fill in quite a lot of information for you. It is required to put in a description. We're just going to put in testing here. You'll see also from the name, that's the one that's imported. So again, you can go and change that and make it a bit more simple for oh, yes. the end user. Definitely, that would be a good idea. We have a lot of different configuration options available to us. We're not going to go through all of them. However, we're going to show you how you could add a logo, which should be a PNG file. Yep, typically. Best place to find them, just search the web, look for a 256 PNG, put it in here, keep them all consistent and all the same. 
So that's our file selected. Uh, the next step would be to configure the installation and uninstallation parameters. Since this was a originally a MSI file packaged into the Intune WIMP file, Intune has automatically detected the, um, the command lines for us. So what you see here is that it's automatically going to build the MSI exe command line for us for install and also use the product code of that MSI to simply auto-generate the uninstall command. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, and in fact, we have a, a, a blog post entry on this already. Um, you've used the MSI, I use the exe. So uh, I, I'm just showing that I was using the forward slash s installation for the silent. That's cool. I like MSI files. Yeah, MSIs are nice, granted. But this is just to show the difference between having an XE that you want to install and having an MSI. Oh, yes, definitely. The step after that is that we need to set a few requirements for this. First one would be to select either if it's going to be executable as in 32-bit or 64-bit. I've downloaded the 64-bit application, so I'm going to select that one. And we need to specify a minimum operating system that's going to be supported for this application to run on. As you might see on the screen as well, the red asterisks are the required fields. Exactly. We could go through and, for instance, specify a requirement of, let's say, we know that this application would require 100 megabytes of uh, disk space to be installed. Then we could simply specify that here. And you have a few other um, possible requirements that you could put in that fits your environment. Protection rules. You like those? I do. Yeah. I mean, you're using an MSI here, so... So what we could do is that we can manually configure detection rules. And this is even more magic, because when I click Add here, and I select MSI... Indeed. It's got the GUI. It has the GUI. This is nice. We could also go in deeper to specify a specific version of the application. I'm not going to do that in this demo. So we have added the detection rules, and detection rules are simply for detecting that the application has been installed, so that the successful uh, error code message, uh, <laughs> successful error code, <laughs> successful installation, successful installation can be determined by uh, by Intune. Just like I was saying, um, exit codes or return codes, we can either use what's automatically given to us from Microsoft. Or yeah, they've built in the, the generic ones, the yeah. usual. We could change these to any other value if we like, but we could also simply go with what's out of the box or add our own one. Yeah, if you know a specific exit code. 1337 is a good one, and I believe that is fail. So let's do that. So when I add this one, you now see the application is being created. And with a little bit of time, mm -hmm. a little bit of patience, mm -hmm. and a few F5, or yeah. refreshes if you want to click that. Remember, it's still in preview, at least the, uh, the version that we have access to. And there we go. And here we go. We have the application. So what kind of distribution mechanism or is this being used to deliver this onto the client? So this is using the uh, Azure Content Distribution Network um, to feed into the client. Um, during testing, it, there were other means being developed, but I, I see the applications coming down quicker now. That's good, that's good. And also the, the, the component um, that handles the whole installation is the so-called into management extension. Um, if you have any of your devices that currently hasn't executed any PowerShell script or anything like that deployed from Intune, uh, and you deploy one of these applications, uh, the Windows App Win32 applications, it's automatically going to install the Intune management extensions for them. Um, so it will take care of that automatically too. That's a lot of automatic stuff. It is, on. yeah. So let's go back. What's coming up in the future? Yeah, so this is some of the stuff that we heard coming back from the audience at one of the sessions at Ignite. 
um, what they'd like to see. You know? I mean, a lot of people are very happy with what's, what's appeared, but you know, there's some suggestions because we're coming from a land where we've had configuration manager and there's just so many bells and whistles you can take. Mm -hmm. So true. I mean, configuration management has been around for many years. This has just surfaced in Intune. Obviously, we're not going to have the same parity of features originally in the first version. Um, but there were a few things that the audience asked in particle before, especially dependencies. A lot of people were cheering when someone mentioned dependencies. Um, and just so you can explain, what is a dependency? A dependency? That mm. is that if you have two applications, let's, or let's say you have a main application, that application requires an additional in application to be installed before that installation. So people would know that, like a, a prerequisite application. A prereq, yeah. So you would build a chain of applications. Say, this prereq application gets installed before the main application gets installed. Superseding was also a hot topic people discussed about and asked questions about. New, newer versions coming along, yeah. Yeah. An automatic replay, repair. That's a good one. That's needed for some MSI installation, or absolutely. And there were also one guy asking for the capability of deploying large applications, more than 10 gigabyte. Yeah, so in that kind of specific circumstance, what they're really looking at is the likes of uh, large AutoCAD installations. And what are the limits that they currently have with the Azure storage blob that's housing the software to be distributed out to their machine? Oh, yes. And to sum all of this up, basically the reply from the product group was saying, was, it's in their backlog. They're working on it. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. That's good. Yeah, great feature. It's a really great feature. I really look forward to see what they are going to build with this one. Yeah, so try it out. If you need to run through it at all, we've got screenshots on our blog. We do, we do. Which is the SE Config Manager blog. Yeah. And if you want to follow more of our exploits and talk about Microsoft Ignite, subscribe below.